This is R.J. Young, uh, author of Let It Bang, and you're listening to So Booking Cool with Jewel B. Welcome to So Booking Cool. I'm Jewel B. Happy New Year. Today's guest is a media personality content creator who you probably know from YouTube. He's going to host the forthcoming sports radio show, Fight Me with R.J. Young, and he is the author of Let It Bang, A Young Black Man's Reluctant Odyssey into Guns. He's R.J. Young. Hi, RJ. Welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to chat with you. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. So what is Let It Bang about? And can you tell us what the events were that that led up to you writing it? Um, Let It Bang is my attempt to get to know someone who believes something totally different than I do. Um, And I was led into this journey not thinking I was going to write a book, but just trying to get to know my ex-wife's father-in-law. And the only avenue I had to get to know this man was with a handgun. And that wasn't my choosing. I didn't know anything about guns, didn't want to know anything about guns, uh, except that they could get me killed. Military used them, cops used them. But uh, the way that this man presented me with this this handgun um, led me to believe that it was very, very important. And kind of like a trophy in the way that your kid might present to you their trophy from T-Ball. They're just so very proud of it, and they want you to recognize the significance of it. And I carried that with me for uh, quite a while as I continue to try to get to know this man. And I love football. I mean, you, you mentioned that I'm going to host a sports radio show. I love sports, and he could care less about those things. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I got to circle back around to the only things that we had in common were his uh his daughter Lizzie and guns and you can't build a relationship around you know a mutual affinity for a person if this person is going to be your family so here we go with guns wow RJ so did your former father-in-law he had a passion for guns yes um mm-hmm. he collected them uh he used them for self-defense uh, at one point in life he hunted not so much anymore. Um, but this was a subject for which he would talk at length about, and this is not a man who was given to soliloquies. And that was another way that I recognized that they were such a big deal to him. So in writing your experience about guns and your perspective on it, how did that change your life? Oh, I got to not just get to know guns. I got to be very, very, very good with them. I got to be an expert marksman. I handgun. Uh, license. I'm cons- licensed to teach uh, handgun license in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and in so doing, I really did start to think about my own relationship with guns, not just, you know, as RJ, but as a black man in the 21st century, uh, around the same time that Trayvon Martin was shot by George Zimmerman, around The same time that uh, Laquan McDonald was shot 16 times, uh, around the same time that Freddie said he couldn't breathe and Eric Garner was shot and Terrence Crutcher shot in my hometown. What do these things mean for me and what do these things mean in my own family, uh, which is rich in civil rights history? What would you say has been the response so far to Let It Bang? Has it been mixed? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there are people who say, hey, um, I never thought about it this way. Mm -hmm. I still believe what I believe, but I appreciate you giving me your perspective. There are other folks who have seen the cover of the book and decided that they know what it's about. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then there are folks who are pushed to consider it, and it makes them very uncomfortable, and it makes them examine the way in which they walk through the world. And that's mostly... What I'm asking folks to do is examine the way that they walk through the world and what influence they have that they may not have even considered until recently. Are there any misconceptions at all about guns? Yes, I think so. I think many folks are, many folks believe that a gun can only be used to hurt someone, and that's true to a degree, right? You can, a gun is, I call it having Thor's hammer Mm -hmm. in that what if everybody had Thor's hammer? And then you told folks, hey, 
So I'll just put down the hammer. It's really, really powerful. It can destroy an entire planet. It is made from the most remarkable piece of metal in the entire universe. And you know, you're making us very uncomfortable with it. The person with the hammer would look like, uh, look at you like you're crazy and tell you, no, you put yours down <laughs> because everyone wants to feel protected and safe. And I think that's a misconception is that folks have guns to enforce their will upon other folks. I think it's uh, the inverse. It is people have guns because they want to feel safe. And in the in their feeling safe, the rest of us may not feel so safe because, frankly, mm -hmm. we just don't trust that person with a handgun. So have you had a conversation about guns like with, with your family and other black men since the release of Let It Bang? And what has the discussion looked like? Yes. Uh, when in the process of writing it, my best friend asked me to teach him to be better with a firearm because he was afraid. Um, many black men I know have handguns because they're afraid, because they feel that many white folks are already armed and that they're not going to go down without a fight. My mother walks around with a firearm, and I believe that this is also interesting because uh, women have a perhaps to me uh, the greatest argument to be armed because they can be easily overpowered physically it's just testosterone biology and my mother uh, uses a cane to get around she is in her 60s and she's not going to be able to defend herself in the way that I would I'm 31 I'm able-bodied I work out every day I do not walk around at night and believe that I'm going to be attacked that's my privilege, uh, but I certainly understand someone who does having a firearm because they need the force multiplier. Mm. However, I don't believe that many of my friends need a handgun to be safe. One, because the number of times for which they might have to use that handgun is exceedingly rare. And number two, they'll be able to get a lot further in a discussion <laughs> if they don't have a handgun present. Now, we can get into violent acts versus uh, defensive acts, and we can continue to have a conversation about what is a harmful situation. But in my experience, if you were willing to just listen and talk and treat everyone's fears as if they are real rather than fantasy, you'll diffuse a situation and you'll understand a person rather than want to impose your will on that person by means of a weapon. You know, RJ, do you plan to write another book? <laughs> uh, per per perhaps, but not at present. Okay. And by the way, also, like, as we did cover, you are a sports fan, and I know you're fond of football. I'm just curious, like, and I think other people would be too, like whether or not you would ever write a book that had anything to do with sports at all. I think if it was a book that my agent thought would sell, I would be overjoyed to write a sports book specifically about college football. So what can you tell us about your Fight Me podcast that's coming out February in February? Well, uh, it's a terrestrial radio show, and I'm very excited about it because it came out of my YouTube channel, which is a thing that I started because I was getting really depressed writing this book we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted an opportunity to, to go to a place that was safe for me, as safe as any space can be, and talk about a thing that I truly enjoy that didn't bring me down. And it turns out that there are quite a few people who like to hear me talk and geek about in particular, OU football, but sports at large. And uh, it's the kind of thing that I look forward to doing every day in the way that I look forward to writing. And it reached a tipping point in which the, the local sports station here, uh, KYAL, asked me if I would consider doing a Sunday morning show. And I said, yeah, man, um, I'm there for it because we're going to have a good time talking about sports. And, you know, uh, I love that because folks that wouldn't necessarily want to pick up my book or wouldn't necessarily want to hear someone talk from my personal experience about guns would consider it because they can talk to me about sports. They can hear me 
be reasoned and nuanced and understand that we're going to we're going to treat this smartly. We're going to have an adult conversation about this and the antagonistic rhetoric is not so much as important as the meaning making rhetoric. What does this mean? What is the context of what we're talking about as opposed to hey man, uh what does make America great again mean is way different than make America great again. Um or be prepared. What does that mean? That's Boy Scout model. I'm an Eagle Scout. Give context to that. And I think being able to speak to your own experience and also have the wherewithal and the patience and the want to, to hear somebody else's is the most important thing that I've been able to learn and give I think and I think sports is a safe space to do that in in most instances like I I get into race and politics when it warrants but for the most part hey man we're going to talk about X's and O's and we're going to talk about uh, why these stories are important as opposed to you know what the score of the game is because that's something anybody can see and inarguable we're going to talk about how did this get to be the way that it is and I think that's also speaking to the way and the mindset I had in writing my book. So are there any books, RJ, that have like left such an impression on you? Do you have any favorites or a favorite author? Oh, yeah, several. I mean, we could, we could be here all day. <laughs> um, Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff is mm-hmm. magnificent. I truly enjoy it. Um, for those folks that want companions to my book uh if you have not read between the world and me by ta coates please do that um the same thing with michelle obama's becoming which i hope everybody who's listening to this podcast has <laughs> at least picked up by now um but also no. uh david foster wallace's uh infinite jest is one of those things that perhaps people would see on somebody's shelf and then roll their eyes about but uh there's in particular um a prescient gun scene um that i'm not going to give spoilers to but um i think you'll understand more about mindset from that and here just recently i've been reading robert whiting on uh, baseball in japan and i'm yeah it's fascinating there are two books uh one is called you gotta have wa and the other one i think is called the samurai way and now i'm into his book about you know the underworld in tokyo but uh, I, those are the things that come to the top of my list right away. Wow! Thanks for for name dropping those. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Also, I have to mention that you you did win a contest, and and it has to do with college. I believe you won like forty thousand dollars. Can you just tell us more about that and why education is important to you and your creative approach to you know being a part of that contest well it was actually about a year ago at this time when in the comments of my youtube channel a fella dropped a link to a natural light scholarship contest and said hey man they just want people to make videos and i don't see why you wouldn't win and i said no okay well i'll take a look and i read through the rules and the rules were make a short video between 30 seconds and like three minutes about why you were inspired to go to college and uh, i set up shop at my girlfriend's house for an afternoon and i threw all these assets together and this is on the youtube channel for anybody who's looking for it but i submitted it uh, along with a couple of others to the scholarship contest put on by natural light where they were giving 25 people forty thousand dollars in student loan forgiveness and i like 40 million people have a lot of student loan debt because I wanted to go to the University of Tulsa. I wanted to go to the University of Oklahoma, and I'm pursuing the PhD at Oklahoma State University in English. And these were all ways for which I could distinguish myself. I I tell folks to really think about why you're going to college. You know, if you're going to college to enrich yourself, that's great. But I mean, you can do that at the library. If there is a job that you know you need a degree for like you have to present that piece of paper that's a reason and a good reason to go to college but the way that i have chosen to do this i want to see it all the way through so i can get to uh, 
I want to get to an FU stage of education, which mm. is to say, hey, man, I'm an expert on this, kind of like with my book, right? I was both interested and pissed. I, I was humiliated in the way that I was shooting because I wasn't very good, and then I was told over and over that I wasn't very good. And just my basic makeup is, okay, now I need to be the best at this. And that's what I did. That's why the NRA certification and so forth so on um, was just part of that process. But in pursuing the PhD in English, this gives me a, a level of remove for which the conversation is no longer about my credentials. The conversation is now about the topic at hand, the subject at hand. And because I am a black man and because I have tattoos and because I have dreads and because I'm a millennial, these are all things for people to trip over on the way to what I think is the conversation we need to have. And when they see these credentials, when they see this book, these are all ways for which I get to bat away the usual um, hiccups about what do you know about this subject or why why should I listen to you. So now, for instance, when I walk into a conversation about the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. there is no more conversation about, hey, you don't use a gun or you don't really know what it means to have a gun. There is only the conversation about the Second Amendment. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Why is there a conversation about the Second Amendment? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's vague, <laughs> because it's short, because it doesn't really give you much guidance, and because it feels so antiquated and archaic in its writing. I think today to have a conversation about that is to also have a conversation about uh, mental health, is to have a conversation about race, is to have a conversation about class. Um, and even region, because I'm from Oklahoma, where it is not uncommon for someone to have a firearm at all. It is not uncommon for someone to open carry a firearm at mm -hmm. all. Whereas if you go to New York and you saw a gun that was on a police officer, you might freak out because they got laws against that. And I think that's all about it, right, is we're talking about state rights. We're talking about big government. These are all things that are just inside of the Second Amendment, and it's very short language. But also, I'm not the person to tell you that the Second Amendment needs you to change anything about it. Don't remove a comma because I'm black. And that right, along with lots of others in the Bill of Rights, was not always granted to me. So I don't want to begin to start playing around with what is in and out of the Bill of Rights. That's not for me to, de to decide. But to have a continuing, ongoing discussion about it, well, man, I'm training to be an English professor. I'm here for that. RJ Young, everyone, wow, you, I really, really enjoyed talking with you. Everyone, you have to pick up Let It Bang, A Young Black Man's Reluctant Odyssey into Guns Sold Wherever Books Are Sold. Is that right, RJ? That's right, ma'am. And how can people keep up with you and all that you have going on? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, if, if you're into sports, I don't really tweet about guns. At all, uh, and I only make a passing glance to this book now that it's out and available, and I just get to tell people, hey, I wrote a book about this. Go check it out. Um, but I'm also on YouTube every day, and I generally try to get back to people if they reach out to me. I would like to know if you could squeeze in, like, your your most important YouTube tip for for all the YouTubers out there. Make something every day. Mm, okay. Every day. Upload, always be uploading, always be uploading, always be uploading. Wow, I love I love that piece of advice. I'm going to take that advice on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much to all the listeners. And until next time, so booking cool.